Hey, what's up, guys? How are you guys doing tonight? Hey, Larry. Hey, man. I said. Altimar, hi. Michael, hi. Oh, you're watching Batman the Animated Series? That's cool. Uh, I'm good. I'm just, uh, just drawing as usual. I'm studying tonight. And, um, doing, like, uh, some portrait studies. I guess stylized portrait studies. I'm not... Hi, X. What's up? I thought I'd do some female head sketches today, so you guys get to watch. Hang out. If, uh, if anybody has any questions, as usual, just throw them in the, the chat and see if we can answer some stuff or pff, whatever you guys want to talk about. See how this goes if I'm drawing tonight. Got any tips on how to draw female body proportions? Uh, sure. Um, I mean, I don't know if, uh, let me make a new layer. Um, so whenever I'm drawing, like, uh, um, like figures, especially like women, I, I like to, first of all, I'll get good reference, you know, uh, typically um, I'll look for a starting point, um, so I'll find a picture that I kind of like a pose or whatever, and it just kind of gives me something to go off of, and then I'll um, uh, go from there, but I mean, in general, you know, like a basic, like, uh, proportions is you want you want a figure to be uh eight heads high eight heads tall so you're using the the head as a um as a unit of measurement so if i was to take this right here i'd cut that in half and then basically i want to take the head and you know get eight like even sections. I mean, this is not even, but you know, so one, two, three, four, that's the crotch five, six, seven, and then eight would be, um, all the way at the bottom basically. And, um, you know, for female proportions, you, you just want to make sure that, uh, really that, you know, you're going to have smaller shoulders, and uh, wider hips, basically. Um, knees fall around six, and then the feet are all the way at eight. And this is just quick and dirty. I mean, um, there's a lot, uh, a lot of really good books on uh, uh, figure drawing and proportion. Um, and the only way to really get good at it is just to kind of keep drawing it like because I like when I'm drawing I won't ever like measure out the uh the figure each time you you, you just kind of get used to um so I'll throw in the... 
you'll get used to the proportions the more more you draw it and then you'll start eyeballing it but you know maybe for the uh when you're first starting out and you're really trying to learn it you know maybe do the measurements uh uh each time you know to try to try to get used to it Oh, uh, uh, you don't know English, uh, Salva? Lord, um, and hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. A good, a good book, uh, for proportions and, uh, figure study is Andrew Loomis's, um, uh, Figure drawing for all it's worth. So that's basically um, what I would say about that. Now, like proportions, I mean, you, you can go like uh, once you know like the basic proportions, then you can start pushing things. Like I like um, more. Uh, I wouldn't say like thick, but I don't. I like more of like a classic, like um, kind of like fifties, like pinup girl kind of uh, style, a uh, uh, body style. Um, so, uh, like the the women that I'll draw won't be like um, uh, they won't be really th they'll be thin or whatever, but you know they they still have some like you know meat, and they're just very like. And this is just like a quick thing, like they'll just have uh, a little bit uh, curvy, I guess, you know. You know, that's the, that's, that's basically what I'm saying. But uh, anyway, you know, what well, once you know, once you know the basics, then you can kind of, uh, um, you can play with the, the proportions, basically. Um, so like I said, I would get uh, Andrew Loomis's book, uh, Figure Drawing for All It's Worth. They have, they have free PDFs online. It was, uh, it was built, uh, or not built, uh, it was written and it's in the public domain because it was so old. You'd like to know how to draw like me. Um, well, if you basically to draw like me, you just got to screw up a bunch and uh, um, keep erasing and, and drawing again and again. That's pretty much how I draw. Uh, I'll, I'll like try things and... Um, uh, and, uh, I, a lot of, a lot of what I know is, uh, trial and error, you know, and not, not giving up, you know, so like in, and you can always watch these, maybe you'll pick something up. I mean, that's how I learned how to draw uh, a lot of things is by watching, um, uh, YouTube a lot and other artists, uh, and just trying to consume as uh, much information as possible. You know, if I, if there's an artist that I like, what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll get as many books or, you know, uh, copies or, or whatever of their work. And I'll just do a lot of like, uh, studies and then slowly, uh, by doing those studies, I start to pick up on, um, you know, how they draw, how they like interpret things. And, and, um, you know, I try to use the things that work, uh, best for me and the things that I find appealing about their art. And I try to adapt it into what I'm doing, you know, and there was a, what was the, there's a saying, um, uh, good, good artist copy, great artist steal. I think that's how it goes. I'm not sure who said that, though. 
Um, and I don't mean like, you know, like totally like straight up plagiarize people, but, um, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with, uh, studying from the folks that you like and trying to incorporate some of what they do. I mean, you look at like a lot of, a lot of artists, you, um, a lot of times you can see like little hints of their influences, um, and the people that they like in their art. Me, I like a lot of like old, like, uh, comic book illustrators. Um, and I like more of like a, a classic, like kind of inky, um, almost uh simplistic, uh, simplistic style so I try to to incorporate that into what I do AF how you doing you know and it's not always perfect And you'll find uh, over time, you'll just kind of develop uh, ways that you like doing things. Like, like for me, it's a lot of uh, trial and and uh, error. And I use a lot of reference too. Like, so, like what I'll do is I'll, I'll find a find a picture that I like, um, a pose or, or, or a face. And I'll, I'll start a drawing out, um, using it as like inspiration, you know, just to kind of get, uh, get my pencil moving. You know, it's hard. Uh, it's, it can be really hard to just, uh, sit down and just draw something to create, you know? Um, so sometimes it, it just helps out having that little, like, um, uh, prompt or uh, inspiration to get things going. And then once it's going, then you can change things, tweak things, and, uh, you know, just gives you a jumping off point. Like I said, a lot of what I do is, is, uh, like I'll, I'll keep like adjusting things until I feel like I found something that that feels right, you know. And I just do a lot of a lot of studying. You know, I wish I wish it was like. Sometimes I wish it was like easy all the time but it it rarely ever is and when it when it do when I do do something and it's and it's easy I'm like uh, how the heck did I do that you know like I feel surprised I'm like wow that that was not bad um, and that doesn't happen very often usually I have to work work for it So oh, and like when I'm doing these these uh these like little studies from like or using reference I'm I'm just using it as a guideline. I'm not I'm not trying to make it uh photorealistic or um perfect. I'm just trying to get the general ideal. face. I'm going to round it out a little bit more. Her eyes a little big and her nose is messed up. 
Let's try this. And pay more attention to the Hey, Tony. Leonardo, how you doing? See, that's what I might do for this. Hi, Crystal. How are you doing? So I'm just, uh, just doing some studies. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's, uh, snowed a lot today. And uh, I got off work early, so I'm doing real good. Oh, thanks. I was practicing. I always, always do a lot of uh, studying and stuff. Oh, yeah, no problem, Keith. I, I appreciate you guys taking the time to come hang out with me. Hey, Bobby. Again, like I, like I said, if you guys have any questions or anything, if I can, you know, help you figure out how to draw something or give you some insight on the, how I do something, please just shoot it in the, uh, put it in the chat and see if I can answer it. Yeah, you know, I can't promise that it'll be a, a a good answer or a coherent one, but hopefully, uh, hopefully it is. Hey, crew. Uh so, uh, E-Man says, do you use one size brush, uh, they use throughout the piece? Yeah, for the, for the most part I do. Uh, this brush here is, um, has kind of like a pressure control, so it can go really thin or really fat just by pressing down. So, um, usually I just leave it on, uh, like kind of like, uh, lower setting and, and then, um, you know, I just use the pressure to, to increase and, and, and decrease the size. Um, it's almost, it's, it's very similar to like a regular, like how you would work a regular brush, brush pen. Uh, Tony says, uh, I have trouble with faces. What can I do for uh, smaller facial details? Um, for, for smaller, uh, like details, um, I would say just a, if there's things that you can eliminate um, to get uh, to get your point across or, or the ideal of what the what you're going for, um, then um, do that. See, I'm having trouble with the feed. Let's see. I think we're having trouble. Uh, Tony, I'm sorry, guys. I, I lost you for a second. Um, I'll, I'll do. I can do better. Um, with that answer, Tony. Um, so I'll give you. I'll give you an example. Um. So if I'm uh. If I'm drawing, 
a face um, that uh, that's real small. Like for instance, I'll, I'll, I'll draw. See if I can draw this one real quick. So I'll get the uh, the most important thing for like heads and, and and faces is like basically the shape of the the overall shape of the head. That's the that's the most important thing. If you can get the uh, a good read on the the shape of the head, um, and a lot a lot of that has to do with um, the hairdo, uh, hairstyle. Um, also, uh, you know, if it's, a, uh, I guess like, uh, just like the overall like shape of the face. So if it's, if it's a woman, um, an old woman or a, a, a young, young person, like a young person's going to have a more rounded feature or a rounded, rounded head, uh, less lines on their face. Um, an older woman's might be a little bit more, uh, bony or whatever, but like if, if, um, you know, whenever I'm drawing like facial features or whatever, sometimes I can just get away with, I don't know, just as little as, you know, a dot and a line for, uh, uh, for eyes. And, it, and the most important thing is that the the rest of the the um, the shape reads right. So like most of the time when I'm when I'm uh, and I picked up a lot of these like little like things from um, uh, studying like uh, older illustrators like especially like Alex Toth or whatever. I mean he would do like lots of little drawings where. Uh, his, his whole like kind of motto was like simplicity, you know? So, like I may, that may be all I, I do for, um, you know, like features. Like, I guess I, I guess I would say Um, for like smaller features, use the shadows, you know, instead of drawing like a full nose, you would, you would just like indicate using, uh, you know, whatever light and shadow, uh, you have in your picture. That's how come like a lot, a lot of times you'll see like, um, like what I'll do is I'll, I'll have like a shadow on the side of the nose and maybe just like that or something. Um, if that makes sense. I mean, I, I did this real quick. I mean, I, I'm, I'm gonna work through her face in a second, but um, less is more, especially on women. And uh, hey, hello, Otis. Um, hopefully that makes sense. But um, yeah. So I mean, like even even like uh, um, what was it? Okay, so one one of the guys I learned from. Um, he talked about, uh, like, you know, when you're drawing, when you're drawing the head or whatever, or, or a, a feature or, or whatever, you know, a lot of it has to do with shape. So, like, if I took, like, this, like, uh, whoops, let's do that again. I took this uh, simple like kind of uh, head shape right here and you know as long as I had like that you guys could probably tell uh, roughly who that is you know Uh, cause it's all about the shapes. It doesn't matter about like the, uh, uh, the little features in the, in the face itself, you know, um, or if I did, I 
like something like that, you know, you would know who that is. And then I can just put in little indications. I mean, that's those are like scribbles. You know, and that still that still reads somewhat as a face, you know? If that if that makes sense. So less is less is more. I mean some 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 show like some anime or, or like if you're if you're looking at uh smaller smaller heads on like comics and stuff, they may only do that. That's it. Or they'll do eyes no mouth or whatever so i don't know maybe maybe i did i got totally off subject uh but hopefully that makes sense so all right we're gonna do the next head here so i'm gonna start with uh i'm gonna do more of the ball um, is the Loomis method so I start off with a ball get a, a cross for the for the center line of the face come down kind of break this up into roughly thirds so it'd be like one two, three, even, round, and this is, usually I, uh, I'll have this, this will be just like generic uh, head shape, um, you know, that I'm trying to somewhat match to the, um, thanks Morris, uh, to the reference here. And this is this is uh, just like a, a starting off point. So now now once I have like these uh, basic shapes, then it's easier for me to um, start to hang and add my features and stuff. Because if I don't have like uh, if I don't have this, it's hard for me to place things. I mean, I uh, there's lots of different ways. The, it it kind of depends on um, how how difficult the angle of the head is or whatever the the pose is. So I have a couple of different methods for approaching, like uh, when I'm uh, drawing the head or whatever. Um, and it just kind of depends on what what the situation calls for. Um, but most of the time, I'll start out with the Loomis method. So now I'll start blocking in some of the, uh, but I always start with like the head shape for the most part. I, I, I rarely ever, uh, just start from a feature and then build out from there. When I was, when I was younger, um, that's how I would, uh, start drawing. So I would start at an eye or whatever, and then, um, start building the drawing from there. But I found that, uh, you know, most of the time, if I started that way, then by the time I was finished, uh, things wouldn't be in the in quite the right spot. You know, things would be lop, really lopsided, um, had more errors in the drawing. Now, start blocking in some of the features with some, it's kind of like primitive shapes. A triangle for the nose, um, kind of like a kind of ball shape for the muzzle, it's cheekbones, and this is uh, this is Sophia Loren, so she has really um, she has really nice cheekbones. Thanks, Vic. 
again, guys, if you guys have any questions, um, you know, I promise I'll answer them as incoherently as possible. <laughs> um, and I'll go off on a lot of tangents and stuff like that. I mean, ho hopefully not. I mean, so again, now that I have like uh, that basic kind of uh, setup, then I can go in and start laying in some of uh, laying in my features. And then this is where I really start to kind of uh, push and pull the um, the ink here. But, like, the most important thing was just to make sure I had, like, you know, I had the general, like, um, spots where I was going to put things. this up that's a little better hopefully yeah it looks like the lady from the first hell raider razor yeah <laughs> man when I was a kid and I would watch those movies um, I could never eat uh, when Hellraiser was on, it just would, it would, uh, I don't know. I like the movies, but I just, just could not eat. It must be all the, like, all the skin and flesh and stuff like that being removed. So even though I did I, I did lay in everything, um, I'm not I won't like uh, you know I'm not beholden to it. Like so, if I have to make changes um, when I'm doing these uh, the sketches, I I will I'll make them on the fly. And you know the more the more I get into the uh, to the drawing, I can start to see like okay, this isn't quite working. Um, looks better if I, you know, do this versus that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to bring her, bring her jaw up a little bit and kind of smooth this out. Um, I got a question today about uh, how, how to um, get straighter and more... Uh, straighter lines while um doing like digital stuff and um you know i didn't have a great answer i felt um uh do i prefer part seven or eight uh friday the 13th uh oh that's a good question i probably prefer uh i guess part seven uh, just because it was, uh, um, I guess the ideal was a little bit, uh, um, crazier, you know. I didn't get that. Could you try again? Nope. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Um, uh, yeah, with, uh. It was just kind of an out there ideal for Friday the 13th. I mean, uh, part eight was, was okay. Um, it could have been a little better if he was, if he had been in like New York a little bit more. Hey Rip, thanks for joining. All right, so now.
got this. I'm gonna. And again, you know, like I'm, this isn't like, I, I'm not trying to draw like a uh, picture perfect um, copy of uh, the reference. I'm more concerned about, you know, like just kind of getting like the, the general uh, angle of the head, uh, uh, the the pose or the expression, um, and I use the 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 reference is more of a just a just a starting point, you know. See, like mine is. Her chin is a little bit. I'm gonna get rid of that. See, I think my head is a little bit wider than what's on the reference. shape in so I also think the way my neck's a little long I'll try to fix that Yeah, for them. I'm trying to make her jaw a little less angular and a little bit again like like what I do is uh, like I'll I, I, f I call it more sculpting than anything Thanks, Ron. Let's see if I can clean this up a little more. A little straight lines. Let's see if I can fix this a little. Um, thanks, Tony. Uh, I do. I do do, uh, I don't do very much, uh, sequential stuff. I do a little bit here and there. I've only done a couple of like little short uh, 
uh, short stories. I don't like how that turned out. Oh. So, didn't turn out good, I'll start over. Simplify this a little bit. How did you first find your career with Marvel? I don't. Uh, I don't work for Marvel. Um, I. Uh, I do sketch cards. Um, I mean, I guess I, I, in a roundabout way, I, I, uh, I do work that they pay another company for. And, uh, uh, so, so basically what I do is, um, I, I'll, I'll do jobs for upper deck, uh, the trading card company. And what they'll, what they do is they, they just commission just a bunch of different artists. And, uh, so Mar Marvel, like, you know, um, they do uh, license uh, cards or whatever from Marvel. So I really, I guess, I work uh, sometimes for Upper Deck, and I, I mean, like, I don't do it all the time. It, you know, I usually work on a couple of uh, uh, sketch card sets a year. Um, just depends. I haven't, I haven't had any uh, assignments this year sketch card wise from them um i am working on another set but that's uh, for a different company and it's a bunch of different other uh other properties um and the so the sketch card jobs i just i just got by post by just posting uh you know art uh on instagram one day uh one of the the people that uh, looks for artists saw saw my Instagram and saw that I, I had done a couple of like just like kind of practice like sketch cards for I don't know for what uh, for something and um, he asked if I'd be interested and I said yeah so the first uh, the first set I did was um, man that was a hard that was a hard job uh because I had never done it before and I didn't, uh, I didn't know what to expect and I didn't know how much, um, how much work was, it was going to be, you know, I think I, I did a little bit, uh, I went into a lot of extra details and stuff. <laughs> I think that I, I, I definitely don't do now. Um, just because it, it, the, the jobs don't pay that much. They pay like literally a couple bucks a card. So, you know, you got to kind of gauge, uh, you know, how much you put into it um, that way, you know. Otherwise, you're working for like pennies for each card. But, you know, you do you do the I do the best for with what I got, you know. And I allot myself a certain amount of time for each card. How's it doing, Con? Conijo. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Let's 
See now, now what I'm drawing doesn't really look, definitely doesn't look like her, but I like the face a lot better than what I had before. And in the end, that's what I care about the most. Thanks, Jam. I'm always more concerned about the the end product, and especially when you draw on women, like you know, there's a there's a like a like such a balance that you have to uh, maintain. Uh, for an, uh, an attractive uh, uh, female face you know you put you put it means oh it means rabbit and thanks uh, I appreciate you being a fan um, which brush setting am I using um, uh when you mean brush setting, do you mean what, uh, which, what brush am I using for this? Um, I'm using a brush that I, uh, it's called, uh, the Kniff, uh, it was originally the Kniff number two brush, uh, which I got, um, out of a brush pack. Uh, I think it was, uh, from, uh, True Grit Texture Supply. And then I, uh, you know, just kind of edited it a little bit and, um, you know, uh, tweak some of the, the settings. So, so it's more like, a a uh, little bit, a little bit more steadier than, um, what the, the Kniff number two was. And, um, you know, I kind of, uh, tweak like, um, a little bit of like the, the, the grittiness of it to, and it, and it's it's very much like a brush pen. It's the closest thing that um, I found to a brush pen. I didn't get that. Could you try again? No, no, I cannot. I'm not sure I understand. No, you don't. Man, she's being weird today. I'm sorry. Oh, jeez. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm saying today that's that's making her go off. Yeah, uh, and uh, the the brushes, if I remember right, it wasn't that much for the for the set for Procreate. Um, Um, I can only get a good likeness if I have three pictures from different angles to understand the structure of the face. Yeah, it's, you know, likeness is all about, uh, is mostly about, uh, like the overall shape of, uh, of the head. Um, I mean, I've done lots of, um, I've done a lot of like, uh, study on trying to do like perfect likenesses and stuff yeah she wants to be part of the video um yeah i can show the settings for the brush um the yeah likeness is all about um the overall shape of the head and in in a good land um it, it's hard it's hard it, it takes a lot of practice um, if, if you want, uh, to learn from somebody that's real good, um, the, his, uh, I think his, like I took a class from him, his name's Brian Lee and, um, the, uh, his Instagram name is, I believe, funky monkey 1945. And he's an amazing, um, like portrait artist. And he, um, really helped me out when, um, when it came to, uh, learning how to draw like the head and drawing um, like perfect uh, likenesses and stuff. 
So I don't even, uh, to be honest with you, I don't even know the things that I changed on here. I changed this so long ago. The 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 shape is usually the biggest uh, deal. I mean, yeah, there's so many different settings in, in Procreate. Um, and I just played around with a bunch of them and then would 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 draw on the uh the little drawing pad here until I could um I got something that I liked. So hopefully that makes sense. I I'm, I'm gonna um I will uh you know post this to to Instagram TV um you know pretty much right after so um, you can pause and go back through it. And, um, and try to get the settings to the same setting, but. Yeah. Stroke. So uh, ho hopefully that's helpful. But like I said, um, it's the, I started off, it was the Kniff, uh, uh, brush number two and let's see where is it at it was the rusty nib inkers is where i got it out so this brush pack had uh has all these different um move this over um and i want to say it wasn't that much uh and they have all these different uh different brushes here they do different things that's kind of cool. I haven't, I've never even used that one. Let's see. This one. That's cool. I'm so used to uh, just using the, the one brush that I, I use all the time um, that I haven't really explored these in a while. And the Kniff one isn't in here anymore because I pulled it to that other... Uh, brush uh brush library yeah no problem hopefully that helps and you just find yeah i mean i could probably draw with um any of these like that are more like inky like this and distressed i like the the looks of them um the the Kniff one is just the one I, I I've liked the most. So anyway, that's that's those two. I'm gonna get rid of that. Anyway, okay, uh, so let's see. Uh, all right, I'm gonna try to do these a little bit faster and loose, so. Now I'm going to go for more of a, a shape method where I kind of take, uh, and this is probably more like how I, I, I normally, uh, will do it. I know a bunch of, basically I, I know, uh, I practice a bunch of different ways, uh, to help me problem solve. So if it's a weird angle or something like that, I will, I could always go back to, um, you know, whatever, uh, method, uh, works the best for that situation. What would be your, uh, top five most helpful online drawing courses that you have taken? Uh, also most helpful YouTube channels to follow. Uh, 
Oh, okay. Uh, so online drawing courses. I haven't taken a, a, a lot of, I, like I, uh, I've had memberships, uh, to schoolism. Um, also new masters Academy, uh, which is a good resource for just, uh, you know, a lot of reference and they have a lot of instructional videos. So that's, that one's, uh, that one's really good. Um, it is expensive. Uh, um, you know, I, I Oh, sorry. Um, there might be a bad connection tonight. Uh, but schoolism has some, has some okay stuff. Um, uh, YouTube channels, uh, people I learned a lot from, like, uh, especially like comic book stuff would be, um, Jonathan Rector. Um, he had, he, like when I first started, um, he had, has a lot of videos on his YouTube channel. Um, he's a really, really good artist. Um, so I watch a lot of his videos or uh, not so much anymore, but, uh, I used to watch a lot of his videos. Um, and, uh, who else? Proco has good videos. It's a good podcast that I listen to. Uh, the Draftman pod podcast. So they talk about a lot of art related things. Um, See, I'm gonna stop that. It's automatic. Move this over. Um, so I don't know if I have a top five, but uh, Brian's uh, Brian Lee, uh, Funky Monkey in 1945. I, I took his class. Um, and that was really, that was really, really good. I mean, I, it's, uh, it's, it was like a realism class, you know, where, where we were drawing, we were trying to draw like, you know, like actual like portraits and stuff. And, and it was more painting, um, than like, like drawn. So, a different approach to things, I guess. Um, but that was really good. I mean, I learned a lot of a lot of stuff. Uh, commissions depends. I mean, it, anywhere from um, it really it really kind of depends on what um, what I'm drawing. If I have to. Um, uh, design something or if it's like a an already established character if it's already an established character it's usually about a hundred bucks um for a uh, for a commission if it's if it's colored then i i will charge more um if it's multiple characters then the the price goes up it just it all depends um You know, if it's like a fat, it depends like, uh, if also if it's like a fast, like quick, quick kind of thing. So if I'm at a convention, uh, my, or when, when there was conventions, uh, the sketches are always a little bit more looser and uh, faster. So, um, the price will be a little bit adjusted for that kind of, kind of stuff. So. It all depends. I mean, you got to figure out what, what you feel like, uh, what you feel you're worth, you know? So I, I try to think of it, uh, as like, like how much do I want to get paid an hour, you know? So if the more drawn you get, the, the, um, or the more drawing you do, the, the better you're going to get at knowing how long it takes you to do things. So if it takes you, let's see, 10 hours to do something, you know, and you're charging $10 an hour or, and, and you charge a hundred dollars and it, you got paid $10 an hour basically. So I like, you know, um, I like to get paid a little more than that. 
if I can. What conventions have you gone to as an artist? Um, I've been to, uh, I did Wizard World, uh, Chicago a, f a few years ago. Um, I did a, uh, a few in, uh, I guess it would be uh, 2019 because I did one in 2020. It was at the beginning of the year before they did any lockdown stuff. Um, and it was a small like uh, local show, so. Um, it was basically a bunch of vendors and, uh, um, it was called Mighty Con. So, and there's a lot of those, uh, or there was, I don't know how it's going to be now, you know, like I, um, at, in 2019, um, it was kind of a bad convention year for me. I went to some bigger ones, um, some bigger local ones and, uh, like in Milwaukee, and uh, I did another one in Chicago, and they were scheduled um, on weird weird days where there was other big events happening, and you know I I just felt like things were starting to get like fatigued because there was like um, uh, you know I almost felt like there was conventions like uh, there was just so many of them you know there was like one a month you know and. Uh, they just were not well attended, I guess. Oh, so maybe now it's going to be different since people have been gone for so long um, uh, from the from the convention like scene. Um, once they start up again, maybe maybe they're not going to be as big, you know, because of uh, people wanting to uh, play things safer, you know. Um, it'll be interesting to see how things move forward. I feel like once things clear up, there will be a huge convention boom. Yeah, and hopefully, I mean, a lot of, a lot of people, um, you know, that was, uh, that was their livelihoods, you know, um, going from convention to convention. And I know, like when 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 I was doing them, um, I would make uh, some good uh, good money on the bigger ones. Um, Oh, thank you. Um, so you, that's what the reference looks like. You know, um, yeah, they, they were, they were good. It was good money. And it, um, you know, the one thing I would say about, uh, the pandemic in 2020, I really, uh, I feel like I, I was able to do a lot of practicing and I, I have like this huge, like, um, catalog of like, uh, prints that I can pull from now of like little like drawings that I've done over this time. Um, so I guess that's one plus. All right, this will be the last one for tonight, guys. See, again, I'm going to do more of like, start out with the, the shape. And this, this method I learned from um, Chris Legaspi. Uh, he has a good, uh, he's also a guy, he was, a he was my mentor. Um, I did a mentorship with him in... Uh, 2019 and uh, did a lot of studying with him on how to draw the figure or the heads or whatever 
Yeah, 2020 was a long year. We'll see, you know, like, uh, hopefully this year is better. And I, I, I was really fortunate. Um, my day job is, uh, um, I worked a lot, uh, during, uh, during 2020. Um, I'm an electrician by, uh, by trade, so... Um, a lot of people did a lot of work this year, uh, like, uh, home improvements. And I'm get, I guess it's because, you know, um, when you're sitting in your house, you got nothing, uh, you get, you're just looking at all the things that you've been waiting to fix or whatever. And you start getting things done. How'd I go about finding a mentor? Uh, well, I just asked him, um, I, uh, I had taken, he, He's a teacher, uh, and he was, he was offering like online, uh, like classes. And I took one of his classes a while back, way, a couple years ago, even before the mentorship and, uh, you know, kind of, kind of got to know him. And I was, and he had a, uh, a Facebook group that I participated in. Um, and I, I believe he still has it. It's uh, draw with Chris. Um, he's also got, he's also got a book to um and i'll i'll grab before i leave i'll uh tonight i'll grab it and i'll flip through it with you guys and i'll show you just kind of uh and the book's real good um i would definitely um recommend uh picking it up it kind of goes through like uh this uh this method that i'm doing right now everything's a lot easier now because now i'm more warmed up um so I'm starting to hit my shapes a little bit easier. But yeah, uh, I just asked him. Leonard Starr. You know, I'm not familiar that familiar with Leonard Starr. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to look him up. The name sounds familiar. That's... Uh, Yeah, I mean, like, like I don't, uh, I'm never trying to draw like uh, photorealistic. I, I, you know, it. I studied that at one point, um, you know, to learn, uh, you know, a little bit uh, to learn more in depth about like how to draw the the head or whatever. I mean, I think you got to know the rules uh, to break them, and the more you know, the um, the easier it is to. Uh, Every, when you know how things are supposed to look, it's easier to adapt them and, and um, uh, simplify them, I guess. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. He talked about Mark a lot. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, the, uh, I, uh, I was, uh, doing a little bit of watching, uh, Mark's videos on, uh, New Masters, um, yeah, he's a, I mean, he's, he's gone now, but he, he was, a really great wealth of knowledge, great artist, him and, um, Glenn Orbe Orbeck, um, all those guys that kind of, uh, learn from, uh, Fred, F Fred Fixler, right? That's their, that, I think that's the lineage. I mean, like I, like when I, uh, when I started like, like trying to learn how to draw, draw, like I, I like, like tried to find like as many good artists as I could and and uh learn what I could from them you know if it was a resource or whatever I would uh um you know 
try to buy the uh, the course or the class or the video or whatever and see what I can learn from it. See, this worked a lot better. Yeah, I think that turned out, she turned out uh, good. She's attractive. Sophia Loren's got such a, uh, like, have uh, angular face with uh strong like uh, cheekbones she's got strong features yeah I yep I remember when I first uh, like started to uh, um, study like because uh, I, I would study the Riley method a lot um, too uh, and uh, yeah that that really clicked with me um, you know that's why I'm like always like trying different things because you know you never know what's going to um, what's going to work for you, you know, like when, when I first start, uh, found, uh, Chris's videos, um, like I was like, oh yeah, that's, that makes sense. You know, the way he's explaining things, beef up her cheekbones a little bit. Anyway, that's that. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, see if I can grab, uh, Chris's book off my shelf um, to show you guys if I can find it. Alright, so we're going to pull up a little bit. Take this. So this is uh, uh, Chris's uh, book, or one of them. He has one of them. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but he has another book too, I believe. Um, and again, it's... Uh, a little bit of instruction uh, in the in the front of it, a lot about like mark making and things like that, and uh, but then it goes into tons of examples and like kind of step by step progressions on um, like uh, construction. So like you can see like he takes like uh, the overall shape to to parts of the um, you know the head or whatever he's drawn, and he. Uh, builds off of that until he gets like to to the finish you know so like again you know he's taking like this is a this is a good example so starts out with the you know the head shape he'll start uh put in some kind of like uh little indications of the features just just about where they go he'll build build from there and then that's it and this is um, like, this is, uh, basically a lot of, uh, Riley rhythms and things like that, too. So, I mean, you can see him in here. And he's not using, uh, you know, uh, the abstraction, like, every single time, you know? It's just, like, uh, bits and pieces, you know? Makes it work for him. But there are a lot of the, the 
Riley rhythm lines and stuff. Hi, Jackson and Owen. That's uh, Mrs. Flowers. So, great book. Um, uh, you guys can get it on Amazon. I think I got this one on Amazon. It's got all kinds of other uh, construction things. Ears. If anything, this is very good for uh, actual like reference. Like so, if you're having trouble with like a weird uh, like an angle or something, you can you can kind of refer to this, and it you know it's not going to give you the exact like angle or something on certain things, but it's a place to start. Uh, can you show me how to draw a hand? Yeah, I can I can draw a hand real quick. Um, surprise, Chris doesn't have any in here. But again, you know, starts with the overall shape, builds. You know, it's a good book. Good book, especially especially uh, you know I think. Um, it's broken down in a way that's very uh, it's very accessible, you know. So especially especially even if you're you're just a uh, especially for beginners and even if you're not just a beginner. So. And I have I have a uh, I have a ton of books like that. Um, Yeah, so let's see. I mean, uh, I can show you like uh, I'll show you kind of quickly like what I, uh, how I think about drawing the hand, um, and then that'll that's got to be it for tonight, guys. And then I'll come back tomorrow. Um, but. Um, Again, like for for like for like anything, uh, you know, I'll try to think of like the basic, uh, like basic shapes. So, like for a hand, I usually think about, like, say if I'm I'm doing a hand like palm down, it'll be like the main section I think of as a as a square. Um, the thumb section, I'll just kind of build out like that, like a like a little triangle. The fingers, I, I tend to think of them as one shape, like that. And they're about the same um, proportion as the actual, like, uh, palm of the hand. No problem, me man um, And then uh, the thumb, I just... Now I'm going to add on the little thing for the thumb. And then you can break up the actual digits of the fingers. And that's that's it for that uh you know like the general shape and then you can start adding in uh the extra details on it now you know if you start if you start looking at like the shapes of your uh your fingers again they're like it's more of a, a curve like that so you'll get like you know this finger will be shorter your ring fingers uh typically you know shorter than your middle finger your middle finger is usually the longest and your index finger comes back down and into hello um but that's that and then like if you're drawing a fist a fist is easy to you know again now you just you're just taking that you know the the main like section of your hand I think of it as a block or whatever. And if I'm drawing it from the top down, you know, you got your wrist comes into that, goes into like your thumb, like that. And then I'll just indicate like a few knuckles or whatever. And then you got kind of like a fist. Um, hey, Zim. Uh, and you know you you're your best you're gonna be your best model so if um like say you're you want to draw like a, a fist like punching at somebody you know i would i would take your phone 
and you know just do like a selfie where you're just kind of uh you move your hand into the position that uh that you uh that you're trying to draw so like like this i'm gonna break it down into a basic shape you know it's like more of like a uh, i don't know what you would call that like a flattened triangle or, or a weird like square and then you just kind of break out the different uh digits hands are hard you know and that's that's the the bottom line uh, the only way to get good at them is uh just to keep drawing and you and and you still won't be <laughs> that good at it's like one of those uh things that you just got to practice a lot you know um like if i was going to draw the fist like kind of coming at you i take again i start with kind of like a, a boxy shape here and then i'll just kind of And then once you once you get like the basic shape, then you can you can add a bunch of details. Um, the most important thing is just get that uh, that general shape in. Hey Matt. Um, I mean you can add all the details in the world, but if uh, you just you just need that that basic uh, structure to 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 give yourself something to go off of. It's a lot easier once you have like a little uh, um, something there to, to help. Um, uh, another uh, again, Andrew Loomis has a has a book. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, drawing the head and hands book. It's you can look up a PDF of it. Um, I can draw like now. I'll draw like let's say. So again, I started out with that square shape. Got my triangle for for my thumb. Um, and then I just laid my fingers in. You know, and a lot of times, what what uh, what I do, or what I tend to do, is I'll I'll like group fingers together. Yeah, hands are hard. Hands are very hard, Matt. Um, the the only thing you can do is just just keep like practicing them um you know so what I'll do is I'll do kind of like a indication cuz sometimes less is more you know so instead of drawing like each individual finger I just kind of drew like that little like negative space in there and then your mind kind of completes it. You know, when you're looking at when you're looking at your uh your palm, there's a couple of basic basic shapes to your palm. So your thumb area is going to have like kind of like that that like fat pad there. Um and that'll kind of just break out into your thumb. Um then you're going to have this other like kind of like uh, fat pad here for your by your pinky and then there's this section here and then again you can break your fingers out and your fingers are going to tend tend to uh if you if you look at them uh, when they're relaxed they're going to tend to do certain things like um like if your fingers are relaxed a lot of times you'll 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 notice that these two will, will stick together. Uh, sometimes it's it's you know those three and the and the one is usually like kind of like floating out in the middle of nowhere. See see like my hands kind of at rest. Like these these guys are kind of sticking together, where this one's just kind of like the odd man out, and kind of creates more visual interest too. Like so, if I'm if I'm drawing like um, say like someone's doing like a power and they're like sticking their uh shooting their power at you um or whatever the 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 hand naturally has like 
a curve to it. So like, you know, you'll you'll do your your one finger, this one, and now this is getting into like kind of like foreshortening. You know, something like that. This is real loose or whatever, but um, good, good, good places to study hands. Um, one yourself, take selfies. There's lots of, uh, you know, especially if you're if you're trying to draw a specific uh, uh, a specific hand or whatever. Um, now I'm looking at a a reference that's on my desk. But sometimes that's all you need is just like a little indication. That's a hand right there. Your shoulder comes across. You know. Anyway, so that's that's it for tonight, guys. I appreciate you guys hanging out. Um, hopefully, uh, it wasn't too boring. Um, and uh, again, if you guys have any questions or whatever, please, uh, I am uh, trying to uh, grow my YouTube channel. Um, you can find a link in the uh, in my bio on my link tree. Um, if you if you like what I do and you want to see more stuff, you know, please please subscribe to me there. Um, and uh, the more people I get there, the more time that I'll, I, I can, you know, uh, I'll try to put into it. And then if you guys have any, like, more uh, specific questions, just shoot them to me. And, and you know, like, a, I can maybe make a, make a video on it or whatever. Yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate that. I'm, I, I'm just glad you guys uh, can get something out of it. Um, and it's it's nice to actually be talking to somebody while I'm doing <laughs> doing stuff, practicing. It's it's cool. No problem. Um, all right, cool guys. So I'll probably be here back tomorrow night about uh, about seven um, uh, uh, Central Time. And uh, that's it. Take care, guys. I appreciate it. Bye.